y'all are coming on, I'm going to let Minister Andrea and Miss Valencia introduce themselves to us this morning. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hi. Good morning to you. So excited about being here. So honored. Thank you, Dr. Howard and Casey for putting this together. Uh, of course, my name is Andrea Creighton. I'm a minister of the gospel representing Andrea Creighton Ministries. I also serve as a youth minister, youth leader uh, here at Bridge Builders Church International. And then I also do events and marketing. So I'm the events and marketing coordinator. So I've had an opportunity to be a PK all of my life. And uh, just being around so many different people, hopefully we can bring some fresh perspective and some wisdom to uh, coffee and conversation this morning. So thank you for having me. And uh, Case, this is Valicia. So a lot of people say Valencia or Valise, but it's Valicia. And so I wanted to introduce my little sister. She comes on today. <laughs> Hi, guys. My name is Valicia Creighton, and I am a holistic nutritionist. I own a company currently called Direction to Health. And so it's just a holistic uh, wellness company answering, you know, questions on how to feel better um, holistically on the inside. So that's currently what I do as far as being a PK. That's my job as role. Uh, I'm not, that's my job as well. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, I think I've been saying your, your name wrong like my whole life. <laughs> 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 we all been saying it wrong. <laughs> I think everybody's so oh used to saying V that when they actually say her name, it's just like I, I think it's this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, <laughs> thank you, ladies, so much for joining us today on Coffee and Conversation. Shout out to Dr. Yolanda for letting us take over Coffee and Conversation today. We greatly appreciate her and also salute her for creating this space for women to be able to come and talk just about everyday things and to be there and be supportive of one another. We salute you and thank you so much for allowing us to come this morning. But so ladies, before we get started, just wanting to let you know that you can text 615-624-1327, 615-624-1327. If you have any questions, or concerns so please if you want to uh, text any questions please text that number if you have any questions throughout this you can text that number you can also register for coffee and conversation by texting wow w-o-w-2-6-6-8-6-6 -W and i will be saying that throughout today's live so don't feel like you missed it if you didn't hear it but before we get started if we can just start and um, start with prayer this morning, I would greatly appreciate it. Minister Andrea, could you lead us in prayer this morning before we Absolutely. get started? Absolutely, Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to really talk about you and to make your name great. God, I thank you that you get the glory out of our lives. We just thank you for this day that you've made and we will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it, Lord God. No matter what took place last night, yesterday, last month, Lord God, this is a new day with new mercies, God. So I just thank you for your anointing being present to remove every burden and to destroy every yoke. Lord, I thank you that we have women from old to young, different races, different backgrounds, but we thank you because of you, we all are one in Christ Jesus. So I thank you for the wisdom that will be shared. I thank you for the revelation, the insight. I thank you that what will be said not only brings glory to you, but it will heal and restore. It will transform and change lives, Lord God. Even those that are not on live, those that will come back and listen in, I thank you, Lord God, that their hearts will be lifted, their heads will be lifted, and they be Begin to see a bright future, Lord God, a hope that is only found in you. We give you all the praise, glory, and forever. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Adrian. Andrea, sorry. <laughs> I, we appreciate <laughs> that. Um, okay, so y'all, we have to, uh, so much that we have to talk about today, and I'm so 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 excited for the conversation today so much we're going to talk about because like i said we we were on live yesterday and we were like we talked about so much last before we even came on that it, i was just like i was ready the day we was talking at um uh andrea she was like we should have had this on live and i'm like Thanks. i know it was yes. so good it was yes. so good so i'm excited 
So today, the whole objective is to check in with you ladies and, and really talk about how we're doing, but how we are really doing. You know, we often get asked, how, how are you doing? You know, we people ask us that all the time. How are you doing? You know, everybody always says, we're fine. I'm good. Or everything is good. But we really don't stop to say, like, no, how are you really doing? How are you doing? Whether it's spiritually, physically, mentally, and be able to have that safe place to really say, you know, I'm not doing too well today. I'm really struggling today with so-and-so. So today we really just want to talk about it. And we really just want to just... Like we were sitting on the couch, chopping it up with you guys. And if you were just here and we were just talking and we were just talking as girls, you know, and just having that safe space for you, for us just to talk today. So I believe that testimonies are very, very powerful because it just helps people relate so much more to you and be able to really understand that we're the same. You know, we go through the same things as women. We all go through the same things. So um, I wanted to just open up with V and see if she could start to share with us as far as the mental perspective. I know we talked about that the other day. We talked about mentally. How are you doing mentally? And so I wanted to just see if you would uh, start us off today um, and just talk to the women about how you about your testimony and how you were able to overcome. I know yesterday you talked about you was going to share some things today. So I just want you to. Uh, share with the ladies um, how you were able to overcome different battles mentally. Yeah. So I, you know, going back to one of the darkest times in my life was about four or five years ago, 2016. So about five, yeah. So, you know, I struggled with a deep hole depression. And the reason I say it was so dark is because suicidal ideations, like suicide was on the table for me. So I completely was ready to check out of here. I was I was done. Like I was mentally exhausted. I was physically exhausted. And the thing was, I, the biggest thing is I was void of the word of God. But, you know, on a more practical level or more, you know, reality, as people say, you know, my job wasn't going great. I hated my job. I hated where I lived. I hated the young man that was in my life at the time. You know, it was just a series of events uh, you know, finances weren't the best for me personally in that time. And I was isolated. I lived, you know, 45 minutes to an hour away from a lot of my friends. I was not communicating with my family on a consistent basis, how I normally uh, was. And then, you know, I wasn't in the word of God. I wasn't going to a church for about two years. I wasn't going to a church. I wasn't, you know, this was before live stream. So there wasn't like a ton of messages out there that weren't like old messages from like, the two teachers that I knew, like a Dr. Dollar and a T.D. Jakes, right? And I wasn't trying to search for depression because I really didn't know I was in depression for a while. I just knew I felt right. really low and I didn't want to put that word towards it. I'm like, no. But it wasn't until I started having thoughts and fears of of really taking my own life that I thought I got it because it was a sinking. And if you've ever gone through depression, we I talk about it with people who've gone through it. It is a sinking feeling in your gut right? Which I, I'll explain why I feel it in your gut, but it's a sinking feeling and you can't read. I was afraid to come home to my house. We kept guns in our home. So I was so scared. I thought, you know, I'm just going to wake up in the morning. I'm going to, I'm going to shoot. I mean, it was that dark. Right. And so I remember at the time, and the reason I said I would tell who the person that I was, you know, talking to, it was actually my brother. And, and I talk about that because he was a safe place for me. Dear, you know, my brother was a very safe place for me and we were going through a similar situation. But unfortunately, he was not sound counsel for me at the time. Right. Because his spiritual, you know, game was not like intact at the time. His spiritual alignment wasn't intact. And so he wasn't coming from sound counsel. He was just coming from counsel. Right. So he was just kind of walking me through the steps that he does on a daily basis just to get up in the morning. But again, we were sharing ideas on how we would take each other, you know, not each other's lives, but each, like, we. I wish I would just, and I have to tell you this because this is what was going on. I wish I could just, you know, run off the road or, you know, things like that. But it wasn't until I tapped into my sister and I said, Andrea, you know, I was a little bit embarrassed to tell her. And this is about creating a safe place. This is why you have to have people that you can talk to because you want to be able to, you know, go to somebody. So I went to Andrea and I said, Andrea, this is how I'm feeling. I didn't tell her that exact depth of it and what was actually going on, like the suicidal stuff. But I did tell her, I said, I'm feeling really low. And she told me, she said immediately, she said, you need to tap into the word of God. At the time, Joyce Meyer yeah. was huge in her life. Yeah. And she said, listen, you got to listen to this lady's testimony. 
you know, get with it. And I didn't, I knew who she was, but I didn't know her story to the depths. And I listened to Joyce Meyer, completely changed my life. For six months, I, ho- I heard from the Holy Spirit. I went cold turkey, right? No television, no, no nothing, no, no music in the car on the way to work. It took me an hour to get to work. So that's, you know, that could be traumatic for some people. No music, no music, no, no. I didn't go out. I didn't. I wasn't around people. I literally locked in. I was at work with headphones in, Joyce Meyer, a sermon, taking notes. And I had to recharge because, and not to get too spiritual, but we have to go back to the original intent on why we're here. Right. What is our lifeline? And so for me, I had to go back and I started reading Genesis. I'm, I'm looking for help. And a lot of people say, you asked me, Casey, you said, how could you just go cold turkey? How do you do something like that? When you get to a place where you're so dark and you're so low and like I said yesterday, I had someone in my corner that I knew not of, someone that I had given my life to that had rooted and grounded you know, himself inside of me, which is Jesus Christ. He was fighting a battle for me that I knew not. So that's where I had that strength. You say, where'd you get it from? It wasn't me, because that's not something I would have done, but it was someone fighting for me and it was the most incredible experience. So you tap into that after six months, I can say now, five years later, I have not had another do- thought at all suicide, a sinking feeling, nothing. So that's really how I overcame it. Oh, wow. 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 That is, that is so deep. Cause we, when we think about just the power of God and we think about you know, so many different people going through so many different things. I know we were talking the other day and she was like, no, it was, it was, it was God. It was God. And I was like, no. like, B is going to, if you don't have anybody saved, or if you don't have a friend or you have somebody who's on the fence, get them on because she is literally going to speak to that person. Mm-hmm. Like when she was sharing with me the other day, I was like, wow, that is the power of having a personal relationship with God or having people who who also have that relationship with God? Who can say, "Hey, no, this is this is what it this is what it is." Now, it, it's God who's going to keep you anchored, or be able to pray with you, or be able to tell you the truth. And so, from your perspective, um, Andrea, what what was your perspective during the time with your sister, and how were you able to talk her through that? Well, you know, God is so intentional, and even as she was just saying this story, I mean, we've heard it because it's her story. So I've heard it so many different times, but even just then I was thinking about how intentional God is because from my standpoint, um, you know, of course we've been PKs and when you are a pastor's kid, you're always held to this expectation, this, you know, people put you on a pedestal, you have to be perfect. And so I had gone off to college living my best life. Um, I shared with Casey and, uh, <laughs> and so many different people I've shared my testimony with as well. I've got into uh alcohol and partying and you know just living the quote unquote college life and i was pretty much kind of out there just kind of lost for a season and um i graduated from college and nothing everything fell through everything that i was applying for the plans the you know post college plans i was going out for and nothing was happening and i had really kind of felt in a you know fell in a dark place as well in a dark space and i'm like man, you know, I'm just like laying in bed. I have to, I'm like, Lord, nobody wants to move back home with your parents. God forbid, you know, that's just like a road to unsuccessfulness. And I'm like, dang, I have to go back home <laughs> in my childhood room. And I'm like, I just really seem like a, like a bus, like this is just a bus. And I'm sitting there and I, I, have a this real conversation with God. And I said, God, I'm going to give you 30 days. Mm-hmm. Right. And I was mm-hmm. talking to Casey about this. I'm going to give you 30 days. And it was kind of like an all in thing that Valicia was talking about as well. But this is this is fast forward. This is before she gets here. And this is why I'm talking about how intentional God is. I said, I'm going to give you 30 days. I'm going to cut it all off, all distractions. What I used to do, I'm not going to the club. I'm not these friends that keep asking me, I'm cutting you off and I'm going to lock in. At the time, our church had a lot of different ministerial classes and um, I rejoined the praise team because I came back home and I'm like, I'm not singing and I'm just (laughs) chilling. Like, you know, I'm coming in late to church. Like, I don't even know if I'm going to keep doing this. And I made I just had this talk with God and I said, I tell you what, if you are really real, I'm going to try this out for 30 days giving, sewing, 
uh, attending. I got me a fresh notebook, got me a fresh new Bible. Take notes. I'm going to make I'm going to make this a part of my life. This is my life. I'm going to wake up in the morning and spend time with you. I'm going to have devotions at night. When I have the opportunity to speak with people, I'm going to share the message of salvation. I get, I went all in for 30 days. And I said, if it's not real, I'm not, I'm not about to play. I'm not about to play church and all in the name of your PK. Uh -huh. I don't, at this point, I'm like, I don't care nothing about that. But what happened is because I made that radical step, my life radically changed. And I did not know then what I, I wasn't sitting here thinking I'm going to be a I'm going to be a preacher. I'm going to be a minister. I wasn't thinking that yeah. I just knew my life needed some direction because I was mm -hmm. just kind of aimless at that point. And I'm like, the only person that can give me direction and instruction is God. So I need to connect to him in a radical way. And he transformed my life. He really did. He put a boldness on the inside of me, a confidence. Man, gifts started flowing out. And I did not know that you know, it would be a blessing to so many people, including my family, my sister. And so when she called, it was a no brainer. It was like, because he had filled me up a, a season prior to that, it was a no brainer. I'm like, I know exactly where the void is. This is what I hear from God. This is someone, um, a minister or a teacher that I believe that will really, really resonate with you right now. And that word literally pulled her back out of that pit, charged her up, and uh, it just really started bringing out gifts on the inside of her. You know, my sister has a strong prophetic gift. Um, she's a speaker of truth. And God has just kind of really graced her in a way where she can speak truth without hurting anybody's feelings. It's like, oh, did that, was that supposed to be a fit? Was that supposed to be a fit? But she's a speaker of truth. And I thank God he's intentional. He had me in a place where I could be a sounding board. I think I had a prophecy actually. Cause we weren't that close when she lived in Los oh, yeah. Angeles, we weren't close. We were just too different. And I got, I received a prophecy that said, your sister's about to move and you're going to be a sounding board for yeah. her. So yeah. when we talk about being safe and sound, that was the prophetic word of God that had already come forth saying that Andrea, you would be a sounding board for your sister. Wow. 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 That is powerful. And that is as sisters too. I know we, some of us, our sisters are our friends. And so being able to be there for your sister and be able to know that God used you for your sister or even just be in the ready position for when you were when it was your opportunity to be able to speak into your sister and be that sounding board for your sister. And like you said, being a safe person in a safe place. And I was we were talking about that the other day. And I really did. That just really uh, stuck with me. So I just want to ask you, ladies, in the comments. Do you all have a safe person in a safe place? Do you have a safe person in a safe place? Just put in the comments, yes. If you have a safe person in a safe place, just put that in the comments down below. Uh-oh. Let me make sure. I don't know. I'm getting some text messages from the Lifeline, so give me just one second. Okay, so you guys should be able to hear me now. So let me know, are you, are you guys are not able to hear me? I was getting some text messages. Hold on, just one second. All right, y'all. So like I said, if you have a safe person in a safe place, put it in the comments down below. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So put it in the comments down below. So I want to also ask you ladies, what is a, a safe person, a safe place? What, what, what qualifies a person to be a safe person or a safe place? So, I, you know, for me, I'm looking for two things. I'm looking not only safe, as I gave the example between my brother and my sister, but I'm looking for safe and I'm looking for sound. So, you know, safe is good because that's your comfort zone. That's somebody I, I trust. I trusted my brother. I love him. And, and I know he wasn't going to do anything with that information, but I needed safe and sound. So that's something that you have to look out for. And when I'm saying sound, I'm saying sound counsel. It's got to it's got to align with the word of God. Like it can't come from what I heard on a podcast or these are the steps that I would take to get out. No, 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 no. It's the only thing that was going to pull me out was someone who gave me sound counsel, which was biblical truth. Right. Because that outweighs. We know in the things of God that outweighs any fact here on this earth. Biblical truth outweighs it. So I'm looking for biblical truth. That is what's going to keep me rooted, grounded. And that's what's going to keep me from making a really tough decision or a bad decision. 
And like for mm -hmm. me, I see it as like, you know how when boxers are in a ring and they're fighting, mm -hmm. I feel like all of us are fighting the good fight of faith. We're fighting a fight every day that we wake up. And what's the thing? Mm -hmm. So when the, um, you know, the ref or he comes in the middle and says, okay, time. And you go to your corner. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, who do you have in your corner? Yeah, that's right. There may be someone mm -hmm. there wiping your sweat. You need someone in there encouraging you. You need someone in there saying, I see your opponent and your opponent is moving to the left a little bit and you keep going to the right. So next time when you duck. So I don't even, I think that, you know, you need to have a couple of people in your corner. You know, you need somebody mm -hmm. just, you know, at times to just massage your shoulders and just say like, hey, like there might, there may not even be saying anything to you, but it's just their presence and then their support. You know that they're there for you. Those are people that create safe places for you. Um, there are different things that you'll go through in life and this journey, and it may not always be the same person. So I thank God that I have my sister in my corner, but I also have several other people. I mean, there's some people you need to just be able to call and laugh. You know, you know, some things are so uh, disturbing that it'll, it'll make you cry. And it's like, if I can just laugh this through with you, you know, the scripture says this, that laughter is like medicine. You need to be able to call somebody and say, girl, or like, bro, this is what I did. And, yeah. you know, let's laugh about it. So you need several people in your corner. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I don't believe you need to have 3,000, 5,000 people <laughs> at social media uh, trying to portray. You don't need that many people in your corner, but you need a couple of you know, God fearing, God loving people mm -hmm. in your corner that can hold you down in the fight of your life. It's absolutely paramount. I remember um, us talking about on the other day, uh, V was talking about, you don't need to be following 5,000 people. On <laughs> no, 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 100%. We were not created to have, you know, us be following 5,000 other people. I mean, the sense, because I, I hear this a lot, you know, when I get on social media, I feel overwhelmed. And you should feel overwhelmed. Right. Imagine if you, if 5,000 people could every day on a consistent basis came to you and shared a piece of their, I mean, that's overwhelming, even if it's good news, right? Even when we scroll and see the great bodies and the quick little snippets and the funny reels, it can be overwhelming because we were not created to, and, and T.D. Jakes actually has a teaching on that, which is actually really, really good. He actually deep dives into that, but we weren't created to have 260 million people following us and then we're following 200 i mean this is that's insane and that's why it feels over i don't believe that these people are making that up when they say i gotta take a break yeah it's pressure i i agree you need to take a break because that's overwhelming to have five thousand posts shooting up a day it, it's just we weren't created for it right i totally ditto that uh, and then you also have to know yourself and know where you are in the season that you're in and maybe the season you're in you don't need to be on social media at all i know you ladies were talking about you told we were we were talking you were like we didn't even get on social media for five years five years we are yeah. like we are in the dark ages so we're just <laughs> now i think i i believe i got off of all social media back in 2000 and 15 or 14. maybe 14 or 15 i can't even remember and so i'm just now getting back on social media i have an instagram page andrea creighton men mm -hmm. and actually i didn't even start it my sister started she's like you got to get out there we just started you a page and i was like Oh, okay. I mean, that was just last year. So we are learning so much with technology and things of nature, but we were just able to do some self-awareness. And it's like, this is just not creating a good, you know, space for us. Our peace is being disrupted. Mm -hmm. You know, we're playing the comparison game and we're looking at this and, you know, it's really weighing hard on us what people expect and what they like and, you know, the likes and the comments and, oh, mm -hmm. this picture only got... 30 and this picture over here, you know, got 300. Yeah. So what do yeah. I need to do to get this one back up to 300? And it was just consuming. It was gripping us yeah. our days, um, our whole life, even vacations. We were like, oh my God, we gosh. couldn't even go on vacations and enjoy <laughs> life and vacations because we're just like, oh, let's capture that. Like, what's a cool thing that we can do? And, you know, it, it's it's amazing. And we were just able to be self-aware enough to say, you know what? We're, we're going to come off at a young age. Yeah. I mean, I, I was 22. I mean, that was the, I started it in 2012 right? and I got off in 2015. So I, I really barely was on it before it became what it is now. Mm -hmm. So we got off when it was just launching, to be honest. And everybody would ask us, what's your handle? What's your social media? Base? And I'm like, I don't have one. They're like, what? <laughs> You're like, <laughs> a weirdo, you know, how can we contact you? I'm like, 
write a letter. I mean, I don't text me. Can we still do that? I'm like, call me. I'm a big caller. I'm like, let's talk on the phone. And people are like, I just wanted, uh, what is it called? What are they saying? DM. DM. Yeah. I can't so look at that. Direct message. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, what is it called? A DM? <laughs> I, I was going to say a direct message, but I'm like, that's not what they're saying. They're yeah. saying it's a DM. So. <laughs> I told you I feel like I'm oh. in it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That is so funny to me. When they tell me that, I'm like, oh yeah, y'all are a different breed because <laughs> five years and not everybody is that strong. Not everybody is that strong. So what would what's it some advice you would give a woman? Because everybody's not that strong to be able to just go cold turkey or be able to just say, I'm just not going to handle this right now because they want to be they still want to be apart. I feel like they're apart. So what what kind of advice would you give a woman who's just struggling with you know, taking their, taking that step back. Well, I have a quick one that we talk about all the time. What is your why? Right. And me and Andrea, whenever we're struggling with anything in life, she'll call me and, and I'll say, Hey, you know, and she go, okay, well, what's your why? Why is it that you want to do whatever it is? So why is it that you feel like you have to be a part of this? Like, you know, and then, and if you have your why, then I'm okay with that. So then you, because just a quick example, I'll give you. When people come to me as a client, they say, hey, I, you know, I want to feel healthier. I want to feel better. I say, well, what is your why? And there's certain people I'll turn down because I'll say that's not that's not going to sustain you. That's we're not we're not going to work good together because your why is just not strong enough. And, and I really mean that. So what is your why for social media? Is it because when you find your why, whatever that answer is, can usually be what's going on. What are you feeling on the inside? What's causing you depression? What's causing you insecurity? What What is your why? Why are you on there? And sometimes it makes sense to people. Well, I'm on there because I want gym advice, or I want you know, you know, those are those are easy. I want hair advice. There's a girl I follow. She gives great hair advice, and that's all fine. Then follow the girls, follow the gym people, and then call it a day. It's the excess scrolling. So you just have to go back to what is your why? I mean, that's yeah. That's and the then for piece. me, I probably would answer that and say what part of this social media culture is bringing glory to God. There you go. So there is always like everything we do, God wants to be a part of it and he desires to get glory from it. And it doesn't necessarily mean you need to be a Instagram preacher or a Facebook <laughs> preacher. Just everything that you do should be bringing him glory. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like even I think like the exercise uh, pages and stuff that I see, man, it is so cool because we have, a. I think I believe we have a responsibility to take care of our bodies. Mm -hmm. So I think that when you're showing and helping people how to take care of their bodies, you're bringing glory to God. Right. You know what I'm saying? This is the <laughs> temple of the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's great. Just make sure that you're fine tuning your why. And you're always checking in. Right. So if it's like, OK, I'm wearing this outfit as I'm showing, you know, bringing glory to God. Does this outfit could it could it maybe cause people to stumble? You know, is this a little bit too provocative? What about this stance that I'm doing? Am I am I really angling this camera right? Because could that be a more of a distraction versus bringing glory to God? That's so right. it's just always double checking and checking in with the Holy Ghost and like, hey, you know, I want to do this. What do you think? You, you get what I'm saying? Because if not, it's a very fine line. And what you'll end up doing is bringing glory and uh, all of the credit is going to you. Mm -hmm. And it's you making your name great versus just saying, man, I'm humble before the Lord. His mighty hand is upon me. And in due time and due season, he'll make my name great. Yeah. But it will never be greater than him. And I, I just give glory to him. And like I said, you don't have to be you don't have to cross over into that spooky religious kind of thing you don't if, if god has not called you to be sharing devotions and preaching you know mm -hmm. from the stance of what we're used to then don't do that but let everything that have breath give glory and praise unto him through what you're currently doing i think romans romans 12 and 2 is my favorite scripture and i, I want to say that's the message translation it says take your everyday ordinary life you're going to work, going to sleep and present it before him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it is. So I'm I'm not a proponent of saying like, oh, get off of social media. Then now you're just like, law. listen, I'm saying hear from God. That's right. those were instructions that I got. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't even coerce my sister. I was off before her. That was just instructions that she got from God as well. And that was just a season. Um, if you are a believer in Christ, you will go through a season mm -hmm. where it is just you and God. You, you will go through that time where he just has to say, cut out all distractions. I want to speak with you. I want to give you clarity of what I have for you to do on this earth. So you're not going through life aimlessly. That's right. 
That's right. And I do think it is a point to where even where you're going through that season and you want to make you want to try to reel it back in that you do have people that will hold you accountable. We go back to the safe people and the safe places, people that can galvanize around you or, or come together with you. They can come and support you through that season. But it's also important. The Bible says um, um, uh, Proverbs uh, 26 and 6. 26, no, 12 and 26 says, basically it's telling you the righteous choose their friends carefully. So you want to make sure that you have people around you, even in that space and be very discerning about who you can allow, allow in that space um, during that time. And so I think that is very important also when you go through those seasons that you do have the right people around you. And even the Bible talks about in Hebrews about how certain people will come, that he will send certain people, certain strangers, or angels to you during those times. So you have to be vigilant and know who is who. And so even when uh, people come, know who's there for a season and who's there for maybe a, a year, two years or a lifetime. You just have to know who is, who's for you or, or who's, who is uh, for you in certain seasons and times. So I think that is very important too to highlight. But we also are, we're talking about spiritually, we're talking about physically, we talk about mentally. And so, like I said, ladies, if you have any questions, please text 615-624-1327 or put it in the comments down below. Put it in the comments. Uh, we can see your comments. But if you're on the lifeline, you can text that number 615-624-1327 and we will answer your questions. But like I said, we're talking about spiritually, we're talking about physically, and we're talking about mentally. So another aspect that we wanted to talk, touch on today is the the, the, the physical and how we are making ourselves and our bodies feel. Even when we go through these uh, phases or we're not feeling too good, then we oftentimes just, we the first person who we let go is ourselves. And we try to make sure everybody else is okay, but we let our, ourselves go and we don't really take the best care of ourselves. So I'm going to let V talk to us today just about how can the ladies take care of themselves, even when we go, because we all have our moments where we go through things and we're not feeling the best or the day or this week is just not the best week. But during that time, what are some things the ladies can do to, okay, at least I can do this to make myself feel better. I know we, yeah, you should talk to us, me about trigger foods. I didn't even know there were trigger foods that can make that <laughs> trigger certain things. So can you talk to the ladies about that this morning? Yeah, my favorite subject in life. So I love, <laughs> truly, I, I love this. But I love that, you know, food really does play a crucial part in our life. And it's a, it's a step that's skipped over because it's such a normal part of our life. So it's like we eat to make ourselves feel good. And in actuality, a lot of foods are actually making us feel much worse. Uh, you know, you have your psychological effects that happen. But then, you know, and I go back to the time when I even was in depression. I mean, that was some of the worst eating days of my life. Just kind of, you know, putting two and two together after you have done the research, you're thinking, oh, my gosh, well, that definitely aided in my gut health, right? And gut health is very important for mental health. Uh, there's a doctor who I suggest everyone go follow and listen to a lot of his, um, I want to say teachings, because he is a man of God as well. His name is Dr. Amen. And this clip, actually, I'm going to share this little quick clip that he, um, I saw once and he goes, this guy came in and he was struggling with depression greatly. I mean, he came into him, he said, listen, I've tried to kill myself four times. And he was like, this is my, you know, if, if you can't help me, this is my last attempt and I will take my own life. He's like, I'm, I'm, it's really bad. So he goes, all right, well, listen, the last thing we can do when you have a patient like that is an elimination diet because there's something triggering this feeling. So he goes into the office, he cuts out gluten, he cuts out corn, he cuts out sugar, he cuts out processed foods. I mean, they go through it. Uh, dairy was another one. He comes back in three, three weeks. He feels incredible. He tells him, he goes, I haven't had a suicidal ideation in about three weeks. And he goes, well, whoa, 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 you know, take a step back. Now we've got to add in and see what's triggering you. They add back gluten, nothing happened. They add back sugar, nothing happened. They add back dairy, nothing happened. They added back corn. He said within 20 minutes, he had a vision of a gun in his mouth and he was going to blow his head off. 20 minutes with corn. And so, you know, he goes into like how corn affects the digestive tract, how it affects, you know, and it's not just corn on the cob. So that's a lot. Everyone's like, oh, okay, I won't eat corn on the cob. It's really housed in those corn chips. You know, everybody loves Mexican chips and salsa. And so you have to be very cautious when you are struggling with anxiety, struggling with depression. 
you want to take out things such as corn, you want to take out things such as dairy, you really want to remove caffeine for any anxiety. Anybody struggling with anxiety, you need to shut caffeine down until you can figure out how to regulate it. You know, it causes the central nervous system to go into an uproar. Uh, the central nervous system is already at an uproar with anxiety. So you want to calm it down. And so there's tons of foods um, that you can take to do that. Cherries are one off the top of my head. I have a list on my uh, how to boost serotonin and dopamine levels. It's on my Instagram. I have a post and it gives you 10 foods that will increase like immediately. Uh, so that is something to go check out. But yeah, it's pretty incredible how food can trigger quickly, but it also can help quickly. So serotonin, and dopamine, those are your happy levels, uh, your happy chemicals in the brain that make you feel good. Your feel good are dopamines and your happiness is serotonin. So, I mean, those are, that's just quick, high level, but you know, even a nice anxiety, a nice long walk is incredible for that. I know that's like, oh, I don't feel like getting out of the bed, but when you're having anxiety and depression are a little different. Anxiety gives you more of an uproar, more of a sense of, I can't breathe. Something is bearing down on my chest you feel out of control and that's that central nervous system kicking in. It's just out of whack. Depression, you feel more in a slump. I don't want to get out of the bed. So anxiety, you're still able to walk around and move, which is why you we're in a I feel like we're in a season right now where I hear people saying 24/7 I have anxiety. Yeah. I have social anxiety. I mean, do you not? I mean, every All person I go time. to I have social anxiety. I'm like, "What is that?" You know, what it, is it that you can't be around people? And everyone's, you know, explanation is a little bit different what what they can their limits. But, you know, those types of things like a long walk will help meditation, but not just getting up to meditate on nothing, because I see that a lot. That's a trend to get up and just meditate on nothingness. And that is so, so scary for our adversary because he loves that for you to get it. That's how he puts thoughts into your brain. So when you do meditate, I'm a big proponent of it, getting up first thing in the morning and meditating. But when you do meditate, you focus in on the word of God, wherever it is. Um, I'm a huge proponent for journaling journaling down feelings, journaling down what you eat during a day. I do this with my family all the time, a 24 hour recall. So if my dad wakes up and is like, hey, my stomach's hurting or my brother's like, yeah, I'm not feeling good. Okay, okay, quick. What's a 24 hour recall? What did you have last night? What did you have for breakfast the next day? Those are things that you should be journaling and having down so you can track like, um, uh, like Dr. Amen did with the guy. It's a, what do you call it? Elimination. Eliminate, elimination diet. Sorry, it slipped my head, but like in a food elimination diet. So you now, if you track it Monday through Friday, I can now say, hey, I wasn't feeling too great on Monday. My anxiety was at an all time high. What did I eat? Okay, I'm gonna take that out Monday. And then Tuesday, we're gonna go without it. And then you track your anxiety level, you track your depression levels, things like that. You can track it and you can say, this is aiding and this is making me feel better. A walk is aiding when I didn't walk on, you know what I mean? But you have to mm -hmm. journal it out so you can physically see with your eyes. It helps. Oh my goodness. That is so, that is so good. Just to know that information. Yeah. That is really, really good. Just because also when you think about, I don't think about myself. I never even really, I was, we had a conversation the other day and then somebody asked me, have you ever been depressed? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, how do you identify? <laughs> how do you? Because some people were like, they, some people are depressed and they don't even know. Some people are experiencing some so many different symptoms. Like you just broke it down the difference between anxiety and depression. Because I didn't never. I people ask that oftentimes. And it's just like I don't. I don't know the difference. I didn't know the difference. And then somebody asked me, "Well, have you ever experienced these different things?" I'm like, I I don't even I don't even know to be able to tell you. So. As I even think back to the times where I do feel like I was going through a, a space of just being sad or depressed, or I don't, I don't, I think that's the word for it, depressed, but I remember just wanting to start working out. That's when I started my fitness journey. Most people start their fitness journey when they are going through that, you know, sad state. So I remember just going to the gym. I got a trainer and I just start going to the gym all this, all the time. So do, is there, I just want to ask you V, is there yeah. something to that to where like when people start just to start working out crazy when they feeling sad? Cause I, that's the question I had for today. Cause I was just, I was sitting here thinking about it. I'm like, well, I guess that was a time where I was just really sad and depressed. And so that's when I really started going to the gym heavy so do you have anything about that or can you share anything about that? Yes, of course. So, so working out or exercise 
exercise actually directly affects your serotonin levels. So that is why you get that boost. Like a lot of people will explain, it's like, man, you know, I just got a good boost of energy. Now at the end, you are going to deplete, but your serotonin levels are the highest when you are actually exercising. So that is, that is exactly why you felt the way you did. It's a direct correlation. So it's not a kind of, it's a direct correlation. So exercise, serotonin levels shoot up. So that's really exciting. Yeah, that, that's a great question. And that is your answer. Serotonin levels are like out of this world. That's why you feel so amazing after a workout. And I, I also want to add this as well. It's not just the uh, idea of the exercise, but mm -hmm. I also see it as you've entered into purpose. So mm -hmm. that's another thing that boosts you whenever mm -hmm. you're walking in the divine will for your life. Like this is what God's called you to do. And I even think that for you, Casey, it's some, it's a part of your journey. It's a part of God's will for you. It's always going to boost you. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It's just like whenever you step foot on the battlefield that God's called you to be on it, I can't explain it. Like people are asking, like, how do you do that? It, that's what God's called me to do. Yep. And whenever you enter that battlefield, it just, man, just crazy things start happening. So I think that's why not just the consistency, but it's like the passion is developed yes. in the area of fitness. Wow. wow. I do think I do. When you said that, it's just like I, I really start to think about it because honestly, the gym is probably the most consistent thing that I did. Yeah. I've done for the last two, two years. It's like I cannot miss. I tell Apostle that is my. <laughs> That uh, listen, you can you can do everything. You can tell me you need me. I'll be there. But that gym time, that gym time, that is not to be touched. <laughs> I love that is me. That is me. <laughs> yes. So I feel like, but I feel like even in that, I've been able to in the two years be as I've been able to be consistent in the gym and be disciplined in the gym. It it, it just translated to so many different lives because you know that's a that's principles and principles are universal. So if you're able to be disciplined and consistent in one thing, then it's in your life you will start slowly starting to do those same things in other areas of your life. So I feel like too uh how just being able to in the ground. I think we all go through certain things and certain seasons for certain reasons in our life and God puts us in certain places for a bigger purpose so as as i've been able to really i'm telling you dip, the, my gym is my safe haven i love the gym but i've been able to take that same energy and really distribute it in all the different areas of my life and being able to be like okay no no this is the time for me to do this this is the time for me to do this and i think you know god me not knowing that me fought having a love for the gym it was going to better my life in so many different other areas. And I think sometimes we don't even realize it because I was sitting here thinking like, oh, well, well, maybe that's why I've been so consistent and so dedicated to so many different other things and everything. I'm telling you, my priority box is like, this is my priorities. And if it doesn't line up with A, B, C, and D, then, you know, you can't put F in the middle of C and, you know, and, and B, you know, so I've been able to really prioritize my life but I feel like it came from the structure to one, me being grounded in the word. But also, I'm telling y'all, it's about that gym. If y'all have a gym membership or a trainer, <laughs> get you, the gym ministry, get you a, a gym ministry. I'm telling you, it's something powerful about a gym because I've t my life has literally changed since I've been able to, like you said, cut out certain, certain foods. Go to the gym, really, because even in the gym, if you if you're able to have your headphones on, you can listen to you have you don't have to listen to the, the gym music. You listen to worship music while you're working out. But it's just something about working on yourself and pushing yourself and and having that time to yourself for an hour. I stay at the gym for like two hours. They be like, "Dang!" I'm like, "Well, that's my time. That's yeah. my time to work on me and be there and be and show up and be present for me." Yeah. You know, so. And let me, let me just talk to all the people who don't have that same passion because it is me. I just, but but I, I want to say this. I do, I'm serious. And I want to say this, that it is still your responsibility to take care of your body. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't have that, I mean, I'm, I'm serious. We talk about it all the time. I mean, she says I'm her worst client because I'm just going to be like, oh, I just don't want to be here. But that's OK. Start small. Yeah. You know, I always say this, you know, whatever you do small, do it well. 
and then it will last and you will still get results and you'll you'll still be able to be challenged and grow but start small so don't go and try to do a hit program when you don't like working out you know what i'm saying you may want to start for one of those long walks yeah and put your favorite music on but really yeah. understand that you have a responsibility to take care of your body be a good steward of your body so you can't just you know be we have so many joints and bones and ligaments man we got to keep we got to keep it moving we have to keep it moving we have yeah. to work it out and exercise so and just quickly though yeah. before because if there are people like andrea let me tell you something if you change your diet you do not have to do that crazy working out. I enjoy it. Casey enjoys it. There's others who just love to go beat our bodies up, you know, in the best way. But if you're not like that, you don't have to become like that to achieve mm -hmm. optimal health. Right. You change in the kitchen. You change your diet. You change what you're eating. You change your nutrition. And then you are allotted a 45-minute walk at max. And that's okay. Once a day, even 20, 30 minutes, if you just get 20 minutes of movement, if you just want to stretch for the day, that's fine. Because that's not what's killing you not working out. What's killing you is the processed food. So that's just a quick, if you want to just change your nutrition and you don't have to go to the gym for two hours, you can just go for <laughs> a long walk. You know, I tell my clients that all the time. You don't have to come in here with a crazy work. I don't even offer a workout program because I don't believe in it as much as I dive into holistic nutrition. You realize mm -hmm. optimal health is achieved through nutrition. So, yes, I did. I did all. I did all of that. I did all of that. I also wanted to say when um, Andrea she said um, start small. I totally agree with that because I was talking to somebody the other day just about vision. And sometimes you know we we think so big and we think so so huge about the vision. Well, the vision, yeah, the vision stays the same, but you have to make goals within that vision and know the difference between making your vision and the goals. So the vision is to lose the 50 pounds, but the goal this month is to lose 10 pounds. So differentiate the two when you're going through those different processes, whatever you're, you're trying to accomplish. I just wanted to highlight that when she said that, it just made me remember the vision. The vision may be to to buy a house, but you first the goal is to first get my credit right. Or, you know, stuff like that. So just just making sure you align those different things as you're going through the process. Because I remember what I said, the vision was to lose 50 pounds. And I overwhelmed myself like, OK, <laughs> what do I start? Are you gained? Or, <laughs> yeah. you know, or the, the scale goes up one week and you're like, yeah, you just lose it all. Like the, the whole goal, the vision goes away because of the scale. The, you don't you don't. First of all, we don't know that there's different forms of data that we take in when we're trying to lose weight. But just saying, just seeing that can just mess up everything for you. So make sure you just, hope, you know, you just, the, the, the vision is 50 pounds, but the goal for this month, I did it every month. I weighed myself the same day every month when I was losing the 50 pounds. I said, this month, 10 pounds, this month, 10 pounds, this month, 10 pounds. And it just broke it down and made it so much more tangible to me when I was doing that. Yeah. So, yes. Okay. So, lady, I know we don't want to get off into all this health spill because me and V love working now. We love the. Oh, can you give the people, the ladies, your information, V? So, if they want to um, hit you up as a coach, can you give them your information? Yeah. So, I do, just so I, I'm clear, I do nutritional counseling. I don't offer an actual workout regimen or program, but it is www.direction, the number two health.com. So it's literally www.direction, the number two health.com. And I have all my programs on there. I offer a high blood pressure fix program. It is, has a, a completely obliterated like high blood pressure. It's, yes. it's insane. I mean, I, the results are really incredible. Uh, and then I have a seven day slim down, which is really just a program that gets you prepared for going whole food plant based. Um, a lot of my clients have lost about 10 pounds in seven days. So it's a really incredible program helps you get started off with some good juicing for the body, um, getting some more fiber in. And then I offer nutritional counseling for people who are struggling with things like MS, multiple sclerosis, um, high blood pressure, but you want to deep dive a little bit, hormone issues, uh, imbalances throughout the body. Yeah. Ladies, let me tell you this before we move on. If you if you are looking to do that, you need to uh, message V because she yes. definitely cares. She definitely cares about people taking care of themselves, making sure you're doing the right things within your body. And she's literally a great coach. You, Everybody needs a coach, especially when you're going to the unknown. You need somebody who can who can pull you pull you by your hand and be like, no, this is how you do this. 
And that's okay. If you don't know, then you need somebody to help you walk through it. And I did her her seven day slim challenge. And let me tell you, <laughs> it is really, really good. I am a person who's into like health fitness. Yeah. And that for me, it was just, it reset me once again. Even though I've been doing it for two years, you're still going to have to keep doing it. When you're, this is a lifestyle. So you're going to have to keep doing things to, with your lifestyle and health and fitness. So when I did that, I li listen, y'all need to get the seven day. If you want to just jumpstart <laughs> yes. something, the seven day is the great, is a great jumpstart. I felt amazing after the seven days. I was like, woo, but I felt amazing. It's really like, it's really a great kickstart if you want to just renew and rejuvenate yourself and get yeah. and kick off to a, and I'm vegan, I'm not vegan, I'm vegetarian. So that for me in itself, and I struggle with IBS. Um, and I share that with the ladies that I struggle with IBS and V is actually a person who helped me through that I IBS journey in helping my digestive. When the doctors can tell me what was going on when I was getting procedures done, they were trying to figure out what the cancer is and I got different procedures done and they were trying to just figure out so many different things with me. And I was getting so frustrated that I remember I went to Decatur and she was like, Oh, just try this. Just try this. Oh no, you don't, don't, ever, you don't need that. You need dandelion root tea. That's going to help her. And I share that with everybody. I'm like, no, that works. Like, I drink that after every meal. Dandelion root tea oh, and ginger awesome. ate tea. She told me dandelion root tea, ginger ate. And after that, people ask me, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. You need, this is what you need. This is what you need. You don't need all those medicines. I'm telling you, they had me on the highest dose of lenses. They had me on so many different medications. Wow. They never worked. I had, um, I had, what is it called? Acid reflux pills. Yeah. They had me on all different types of things. I'm telling you. And I'm telling you this because this goes on along with, taking care of yourself. And this is a part of just knowing the information. I'm telling y'all, if you, if you guys are just needing some information, she's your girl. She can help you uh, do what it is you're trying to do when it relates to the questions about the body, trying to figure out natural things, because I'm telling you, as soon as I got on that, I have not had anything wrong with, I, I went off of meat and I started doing the things that she shared with me. And I was able to come off all my medications that they had me on. Uh and feel so much better and make the lifestyle change now and then like i think i've been vegan now for almost a year almost Incredible. a year i'm not vegan i keep saying vegan vegetarian i'm not vegan vegan's a little extreme for me right now but i'm vegetarian and i've almost been vegetarian for a year and i feel so much better i just feel so much better and so we want you ladies to do the same thing you want you we want you to feel better Physi physically, mentally, spiritually, we want you to be whole, mind, body, and soul. As Dr. Yolanda always says, we are this community of women are women that we are talking to who mm -hmm. want to be whole, mind, body, and soul. We want your soul to prosper, as it says in the word. We want your soul to prosper. We want you to prosper. And so to do that in this community, we talk about so many different things. Like I said, if you have any questions, Please text 615-624-1327, or you can put it in the comments um, down below, and I will have these ladies answer your questions. So we talked about so many different things. I know we got on the health thing for a bit, but it is very important. The health aspect is very important because, like I said, women, we are the last ones to take care of ourselves when it relates to everybody else. We want to make sure everybody else is good. Our family, friends, co-workers, everybody else. We're so nurturing. It's just us by nature. So I want to talk to Minister Andrea. I remember um, she's a person that told me. She uh, once told me. I know she remembers. She told me, um, no, you know, you need to have your hours to wear. This is what I do this. And this is when I do this. But um, and after that, you have to just shut it down. And you have to, to let people know that they within those hours, they can reach you. And after that. You just shut it down because you need that time for yourself or you need to take you some trips every, I think she's, was it every 90, is it every three months that you take a trip? Three months. Every three months you take a trip and you say, this is my time to get away. This is my time to focus on me and uh, recharge. So can you talk to, talk to the ladies about that and how you kind of, why you decided to do that? Absolutely. I think I put a post up on Instagram and I got a lot of feedback from different people saying like, wow, that really blessed me or the light bulb came on. But the post said, stop being everything for everyone and nothing to yourself. Yes. And, you know, if you're an empath like me, where you just have such a heart for people and you just want to be there for people, mm -hmm. you will absolutely every time 
almost, you know, just do yourself a disservice. Yeah. You mm -hmm. never consider yourself. And, you know, it's like, well, you know, I'm here to serve others. And, and that's that's that is so good and serve God and serve people. Great. But at the end of the day, if you are of no good, yeah. you know, you have not taken care of yourself. You have nothing to give to anybody. And, I, you know, I just got to the place where I was observing that. I'm like, OK, I have to create boundaries. Mm -hmm. I have to make myself be comfortable with saying no, even if you do not understand that's okay. It's a no for me. I love you. You know, if God gives me something else that I can do without me physically being there or being a part, then I will definitely share that. But sometimes he just, he just kind of took me through a season. He's still doing it now. Yeah. You know, we, I, I go off of my sounding board, my sister all the time. And I'm like, I was thinking this and she was like, yeah, but that doesn't make sense because yeah. it, it literally crosses your boundaries. That's and, right. you know, mm -hmm. I think it's time for us as women to go ahead and analyze and say, you know, when I look at my life, when I look at my day, what time am I really spending with me? Mm -hmm. If God Almighty, mm -hmm. God Almighty said, I'm going to do so and so for, you know, these many days. And on this day, I'm going to rest. Yeah. You have to ask yourself, do I have a rest day? Do I have a rest period? You know, actually, like intentionally put in my schedule, you know. And so for me, I made the decision every three months. I'm out. I have a good yeah. friend of mine that says I'm off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying I'm off and I really am off. I'm not taking my laptop, yeah. trying to work on a graphic, trying to send out a blast, whatever is not done. It's just not done. I'm off. I have to have that time where I can recharge. Your cell phone yeah. has to have a time where it is plugged in and recharges. It's not being used because you're going to be drained. And anytime you're drained, you're going to be nasty. You're going to be mean. You're not going to feel like yourself. Um, and it's just not a good place to be in. And I found myself being very resentful, you know, being very mean, unlike, you know, who I typically am, a cheerful, nice, friendly person. Yeah. And so I'm like, I think the issue is I have taught people how to treat me. I have taught people uh -oh. these are the boundaries you have. And sometimes you do have to walk through a season where it's like, I know your feelings are hurt because I just told you no, but let me reintroduce who I am in this season. That's so, you know what I'm saying? Like last year, I know every time you text, I was texting back in five minutes. Yeah. This season of my life, I may get back with you in two days. That's right. You didn't get my text. I got it. I had no capacity to answer it just That's then. right. That's good. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. if you, you'd have to be able to literally teach people that. That's right. And it's going to be uncomfortable, but you can be bold and just say, hey, you know, right now, that's just not where I am. You have your phone in your hand. I called you. I understand that I wasn't available. Mm -hmm. And you have to be you have to be bold in it. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm trying to protect my peace. That's right. I'm trying to create boundaries that is going to you know oh, make me the best me. That's right. Mm, that is good. That is so good because I know in Proverbs, uh, Proverbs I think it's 28 and and 23 where it talks about how people enjoy people appreciate truth more than flattery. And so we just have to be honest with people. Yes. Oh, we try to yes. mention it so much. It's just like, okay, you're being fake. Like, <laughs> but just be honest. And when you're honest, it's just like, that's just, that's my truth. And so I feel like I've done that to where I just try to make people feel comfortable with me. Like, you know, I, I'm sorry I didn't get back to you. You know, I'm trying to ex overly explain, but I have to take that. And women, we can take that. Like, no, we have to be honest and just be like, I didn't have the, I like that. I didn't have the capacity to even message you back. I have so much going on. I saw your message and it just, it just wasn't something that I felt was, was an emergency for yeah. me. Yeah. It might've been for, for you. And that's another thing, women, not everybody's emergency is our emergency. <laughs> it's not. To make, yes. Some people, and people try to make their emergency, our emergency, but you have to discern like, if you don't yes. even have the capacity to, to deal with that right now, then don't take it on because we take on so much. And so if you don't have the capacity to even deal with that, don't deal with it. And yeah. that's just what it is. Just, that's just and what I, may it not, is. I may not be called to be your pill for your headache. You know, God may have someone else. I may, mm -hmm. you know, I may have information about this topic. But I have to check with God and say, God, what do you want me to do? And if it's nothing, it's nothing. That's right. Like, that's your friend. You didn't do anything. Well, you have to believe in the power of prayer. That's right. There, mm -hmm. My prayer will do more than my presence. That's right. And I think people have just totally eliminated that. Like, it may not, God may not even call me to be in that, in that process or that circumstance with you. He may just say, hey, pray about it and give it to me. Yep. 
and the people may not understand it. That is okay. You will understand it better by and by. But I know I have an obligation to be obedient to God. And he knows. It's like, I know what capacity you have. And so if you just obey me, yeah. you won't be drained. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's just when you're stepping outside of your lane, yes. doing things that are outside of your unforced grace. Yes. All of us have an unforced grace where we just work naturally. This is what God has called me to do. This is the assignment. My sister and I talk about this all the time. Mm -hmm. What is your assignment for the day? You know, mm -hmm. so anytime it's like whenever here's the key point, whenever you're frustrated and stressed, it's because you are doing something that is outside of the assignment for your day. I don't care what mm -hmm. it is. I mean, even if it's a, a let's say my, my pastor tells me I need you to do this. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I can make this and, you know, a little bit better this way. That's not God just told you to do this. That's right. Through your pastor, he just told you to do this. So when mm -hmm. you start trying to add a little spice to it basically mm -hmm. to add glory and credit for you. That's where you get into frustration and stress. And so it is just a new season for me. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, My okay. sister, like uh, we were talking the other day because yeah. I told her, I said, God just really wants me to declutter this year and just to be in peace. And, you know, she was like, well, I really haven't seen a change. And I know Casey, we <laughs> talked about mm -hmm. uh, some of this the other day about everybody may not see the progress. Yeah. They may not see the updates, yeah. but there are some things happening on the inside of you. Yeah, that everybody may not see. The only time people see things is when you fully blossom. Yeah, that's right. So mm -hmm. don't be discouraged. And I told her, and I explained that to her. I said, "Hey, it's it's not for you to see right now. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. stuff happening mm -hmm. on the inside of me." I said, "But you keep watching, and you will see along with everyone else yeah. that the full blossoming of this season will take place." And I just want to encourage those that are listening: yeah. you don't have to give everybody updates. I was just going to say that, in yeah. your season, yeah. like yeah. even I don't care on social media mm -hmm. when people call you, like, "What's up? What you've been doing?" the same thing I was doing last week or last month and, and be confident, be assured yeah. in that. Yes. I don't yes. have an update for you right now. And the only way that you can be confident and assured is if you know that you know that you know that you've heard from God on what your assignment is for the season. That's why you have to constantly be asking. See, you want to know how to rid yourself of insecurity and overwhelming sensations on Instagram because that's a big struggle for people. I, I don't. But the 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 way you do that is by being assured in who you are in Christ, mm -hmm. but then also being assured in what he has assigned for your life for the season. Yeah. And so every season you go into, I know my assignment. So no matter what, you know, the, I can't think of, you know, some of the cool girls or whoever you were talking about, Meg the Stallion, I guess, you know, any of those mm -hmm. girls that you would compare yourself to, if mm -hmm. they're out there, it doesn't matter what they're doing. Cause for this season in my life, he's got me planted here. He's got me right. doing this and you're so fulfilled. Here's the kicker. You're so fulfilled. Your mind doesn't even go there. Like to say, Oh, I'm you're so focused and you're so fulfilled in that for that. See, that's what God does. He fills you all the way up. Yeah. He's not going to have leave room for this thought to come through. His voice is going to be louder. Like we talked about yeah. dialing into the right voice. So his voice will be louder. So your adversary's voice starts to dim. Like that's, you know, so all that stuff that comes with that voice, this voice is louder. You have to be tuned into the right station that rids yourself of all of that. Yeah. And I always tell people, I always share with people that when you are constantly trying to get your value from other people is because you don't know the value of who, who created you. That's right. When you know the value of who, what God says about you, if you go back to the word and what he says about you, then you understand your value in him. And that's all you need mm -hmm. is your value that he said, who he says you are. Because when you understand that, then you're able to move from a place of I understand the I understand who he says I am, and now I'm out, able to operate in that capacity of who he says I am. I don't anything outside of that doesn't doesn't move you, doesn't move it, doesn't make a difference because I know who he says I am, and who what he says I'm going to be able to do according to what he says in his word. And then I also when Miss when Andrea was speaking, I was when she was just talking about uh, when she was what she was just talking about. I, I was just thinking you have to know. The people who are sent to be a distraction in whatever season you're okay. that you're in, because yeah. when when you were talking about that, and I was just thinking about some of the different things that I might about, that I'm even doing right now, when people are like, "You're not you you're not getting back with me," and I feel some type of way, and not understanding that I ha I'm going through. They didn't even ask me, "Well, are you dealing with something to not even be <laughs> able to reach out right now, or are you are you struggling with something?" And some of us do that, or, or if you're that person, then sometimes you just have to reach out to say, are you, are you, how can I pray with you right now? That's you right. want to have those people around you. How can I pray with you 
and encourage you right now. Are you are you needing anything from me? That's how it, it's supposed to work both ways like that to where you have people that maybe the person is trying to get your attention because you're it's a it's a distraction. Something that you don't even need to be worrying about right now. You need to have your focus on something else. And so you have to be very very sensitive when you're walking through those seasons about who comes, who starts to come around you. <laughs> it's like we talked about the other day. When you're walking through certain seasons, it's like I, I talked to you when I was 13. Like where are you coming? Where are you really? coming from? <laughs> it's like it's like this 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 meme or this video that's going around Instagram. And it's like um, you don't find that strange. You don't like suspicious. Suspicious. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you don't find that suspicious. You don't find that suspicious. Find that suspicious. <laughs> but when you but when like I'm like going back to what I was saying, when you're tapped in, see mm -hmm. these don't come out of the blue. Like I was, you mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. already know. You're like, all right, because like we said, the devil doesn't come with new tricks. No. So I don't mm -hmm. know what you're struggling with, what, what whatever it may be, or what you're overcoming. But he's saying, no, no, let me try to see if this gets her again. He's not that smart. Same base. So it's the mm -hmm. same thing. So when you see, you know, old Roger from when you were 17 years old coming back, because you used to be so in love with him, it's like, oh, here he comes. So you already know how to deal with it. You prepped yourself. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you before things even happen. I'm like, now watch this. Happen. Watch. Yeah. And a week later, it'll it will happen. And I'm like, you see what I'm saying? It was, and it's and it's biblical, right? Yeah, because right. we see that in Mark, where Jesus said, "Let us go to the other side." And as soon as he let it out of his mouth, a storm came. There you go. To hinder. <laughs> That's the distraction. Always look for the storm after you have an instruction That's or an right. assignment or a goal. There is going, don't be like bamboos. Don't be shocked. Yeah. Like, there's going to be something. And when it comes, you can gracefully turn it down. Like mm -hmm. Jesus just got up and said, peace be still. He wasn't screaming. He wasn't all, you know, haywire and crazy. He just said, peace be still. And that's what you're saying is when that distraction comes, it's like you have to tap in and say, uh-uh. This is sent to disrupt my peace. Mm -hmm. I need peace mm -hmm. to be still right now. So I appreciate the flattery, young man, <laughs> the man of yeah. God. I thank you. <laughs> I thank you, sir. But no, you know, peace be still right here. This is not mm -hmm. the season for that, you know. Yes, I remember we talked about it's literally patterns. Like if you look back over your life and you look back and see like after every season or after everything that you come or you get a word or you, or you see that God is doing some amazing things in your life, then here it comes. It's every <laughs> single time. Cause that's, that's what, why, it's, it's not an accident that after storms that happen, after we see bar very bad storms that happen, we see the rain, we see the thunder, but then after the storm, we see a rainbow. We, it's always some, somewhere, it's always a rainbow. And so even if you're going through something right now yeah. and you're going through a storm, know that on the other side of that, while you're going through that gracefully, like she said, peace be still. Stand your position. The apostle talks about hold your position. Hold your position and know um, what he always, he says something else too. I'm trying to think about it. But hold your position and know if God before me, he's more than the world against me. And if you're going through something right, even right now, hold your position. Hold on to the word. She, uh, she, uh, like B said, you go back to the word because everything we ever need is going to be in the word. He already tells us that's our blueprint. And sometimes we get we get far away from that, but he's only accountable to what he says in his word as well. So we we forget that no, 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 it's not what we want. It's his desire, it's, it's his desires for us. And if our desires are aligned with his desires, then those desires will be fulfilled. So we have to go back Perfect. to the word and say, This is what he says concerning this. Even if I'm going through this right now. I know that I'm going to come on out on the other side of this because he, he has us. He's, he has, it's a, it's a scripture, um, that what did you talk about him being our anchor, our anchor Proverbs, um, I'm trying to think Proverbs, the, uh, 62, I think five through six, where he talks about, he is our rock. We, that we will not be shaken. So stand on that rock and we will not, you will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. And we just speak that over every lady on here today. You will not be shaken. <laughs> We just speak that over you ladies today that you will not be shaken. If you are going through something even right now, you will not be shaken. You will not be shaken. You will come, you will come back out of whatever you're going through on the other side of that stronger and even have a even more powerful testimony to be mm -hmm. able to share with any to share with the, the with women. Like we're talking about right now, you talked about, we talked about when V, when we first got on, V talked about how she was going through what she was going through. She was talking about how she was going through even suicidal thoughts. And most of the time we look at as women, we just look at the uh, the exterior of each woman and not knowing each woman has a story. That's when right. you look at, 
when you look at each woman, you don't know what that woman's going through. We talk about the Megan Stallions. We talked about that. We talk about the Jadas or the Aries, and but we don't know what these people go through alone. We don't know how these people are in real life. And so when you peel back the layers of a person and find out what's the on the inside of that person, then you find you might not even really want to be like that person. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at the V's and you say, she's a beautiful woman, you look at Andrew, she's a beautiful woman, but we are all going through different things in our life. And so don't judge, uh, don't judge another woman. Just want to say that too. Don't judge another woman. Get to know an actual woman. But actually these two women have been through so much and their testimonies are very powerful very powerful just so very if you need some encouragement just look at all three of us These, this is your encouragement for today we all have been through our own stuff you can look at yourself and say i'm an encouragement because we all been through something Absolutely. up until this point and you're still here yeah so you can encourage yourself even through that knowing that you are still here right now as mm -hmm. a living testimony to say this is what god brought me through and i'm still going through certain things but he's i know he's even going to bring me through those things too so today was amazing, 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 yes. amazing. Thank you so much. I know we just we just over here talking like we on the couch, like we just enjoying <laughs> our time today. And so please um, let me know if you have any questions really quick, really quick. Please let us know if you have any questions. I think I did have one question really quick before we got off. I had somebody told me, uh, let me look. Um, uh, um oh what do you do when you mistreat your safe person oh you need to you need to confront you need to have a confrontation and you need to humble yourself and apologize and yeah. so that's another thing maybe we'll have to come back and talk about conflict resolution um i learned a lot from my little sister with conflict resolution that is a lost art yeah. in the body of christ we don't know how to talk to people. We don't know how to talk about hard problems. What happens when you mistreat your safe person? You need to humble yourself and you need to go have a conversation. That's right. Not yeah. hide behind. Don't hide behind know. God. God will fix it. No, no, no. Yeah. And spiritual yeah. things. Yeah. No. You, what you said or what you did to me wasn't in the spiritual realm. So don't try to put mm -hmm. it in the spiritual realm That's now. Right. I made a mistake. That's Own right. up to what you did, the part you played, mm -hmm. and humble yourself. Ask the Lord for words. That's right. He'll mm -hmm. give you the words to say. He'll give you a scripture to stand on. And also, he'll give you the timing when to do it. So you have to be sensitive. Like, God will tell me, like, call this person now. Go. And, and there's a grace. When he, when he gives you that moment, that appointed moment, there's a grace for it. And that person will be receptive and you'll have the confidence to and the humility to talk and to um, apologize. Apologize. Get the pride out of the way. Deal with conflict resolution. Let, the, let that person know how needed they are in your life and how you need them. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. We don't want to tell people that we need them. Also, if that question nope. is vice versa as well, because I don't know how they're asking. It could be that you feel hurt mm -hmm. by someone and they're still reaching out to get help from you. And you're like, uh, mm -hmm. no, here's the deal. You go to them. Everybody's not going to know that they offended you in a certain right. way. So that's mm -hmm. I'm a big proponent of, of com confrontation just in a healthy manner. So you go to them, you say, hey, listen, I, I didn't feel good when we left this conversation or whatever the case is. And I, I need to get over that for, for us to continue a friendship or a relationship. But you got to go to them. You can't just sit around and pray and uh, asking God. No, no, no. You've got to you know put on your big girl pants There's some action. and you've got to go after it and like mm -hmm. ask them if you want to keep these people in your life. So just in case that question is vice versa. I'm yeah, not sure that's how they're good. asking. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yes, that was Oh my goodness. Yes, they are. Yes, ma'am. Today has been amazing. I'm reading the comments. Today has been amazing. Thank you guys so, 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 so much for coming today on Coffee and Conversation. I know something was that was, something said today blessed somebody. I see it in the comments. I'm getting text messages. I'm like, y'all texting me. <laughs> So today was amazing. Today was amazing. <laughs>